What is happening budget builders and welcome back to the channel. Behind me here you see we have our early Westmoreland Mark 1 Rabbit or golf pickup truck that was originally 1.5 liter diesel that we rescued out of a barn and we now have installed a ALH stage 3 tuned TDI turbo diesel and 5 speed. In today's video, we're going to wrap up the last few things to get this thing road ready. We're going to take it for a drive. How's it going? I'm Michael and this is Budget Bills. My dad and I bring rusty, crusty old cars back to life. Now obviously this truck does run, it does move under its own power now, but we are lacking a few things and the main thing you see that we are lacking still are all of our intercooler pipes. Now the first thing that we're going to have to do to take care of that is actually, I'll show you here, that tur the turbo inlet, or well not the inlet, but the outlet of the cool side is actually pointing straight down and that is just not going to work for our setup. So what we're actually going to have to do is clock it to a different direction. I'll show you how we'll do that. All right, so on the cold side of the turbo there, or the cool side, first thing we need to take loose is these two 10 millimeter bolts right here, which is actually going to drop our VNT actuator, the little vacuum pod right there. And the reason being is right there, that won't actually come past that. So first we'll go ahead and pop it loose. There's a C-clip right up top there we'll probably also have to pop off and we'll get that out of there all right so after removing that little clip there you will slide this off of its pin and then it drops right on out and that is that little vacuum actuator we can go ahead and test and verify the thing's working really good too while we have it out with that out of the way we can go ahead and get these two 10 millimeter bolts removed and get that bracket out of here but now we can go ahead and remove all six. We don't actually remove, let's take loose all six of these little eight millimeter bolts all the way around that cool side. Just kidding. Can you tell I've been working on a diesel? <laughs> all right, with everything loose there, bracket kind of hanging down we can move this wherever we need it nice now let me go ahead and show you why we're moving that stuff so I didn't end up filming all this because it was just it took me quite a few hours to figure this all out and get it all the way we need it over the past over a few days time you can see here I've got a metal blade on this chop saw and there's just a mess of leftover intercooler piping. And that is because I was figuring out all of these intercooler pipes. Obviously we could just try to put a bunch of junctions in there and everything. I'd just be worried that it wouldn't look quite right. And so this was our method of getting it just a little more simpler on the engine bay with also having a ton of duct piping in here for that intercooler. But we obviously, with being stage three and all, we wanted to be able to cool the turbo and the air coming into the engine there. So, I went through and figured up exactly the way I wanted everything routed. Like I said, I took that piping kit from Amazon, or I took that piping kit and we chopped it all up and got it routed just the way we wanted it. And I'll show you how everything sits here in just a minute. And then I've got to give a huge shout out to Scott Wyatt, a friend of my dad's, they went ahead and threw us on some dimes. Check those out. Yes. You guys, if you've ever welded, you know how hard aluminum is to weld. Look at those pretty welds. So nice. I don't think we're going to have any leaks. Everything looks super great. And I cannot thank Scott enough for doing all that for us and getting it all taken care of in a short manner. Let's go ahead and start figuring out and getting everything routed. Now, the first thing that I do want to get put on here is going to be that lower charge pipe that wraps around because that's the lowest part of this system. And then we can work our way up from there. First thing we have going on there is that little adapter that takes it from the, what is that? One inch or inch and a half outlet up to that two inch, which will go into the rest of our intercooler piping. And there we go, we've got it clocked where we needed. We can go ahead and tighten down all our bolts and everything and reassemble that. 
and that gets us pushed out and over to the side here. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I really do oh, like that nice bead that Scott threw on there. It might look like it's a little excessive, but we know for a fact. Originally, I was just gonna get him to put a couple spot welds. He's like, let me throw a bead on there. We know we're gonna have an awesome seal and it'll never, even with the highest amount of boost we can push through this thing with the stock turbo, it'll never slip off of there. So that's really cool. And there we have our first bit of piping installed. Just those couple sections there. Got them nice and snug. I'm not a huge fan of these clamps. I may end up, I feel like they're, you know, like two inch to three inch to the right at the bottom side of that. They tighten down good, but they just leave that big crazy shank. We'll either cut them off or replace those with something a little nicer. But with that done, we can continue getting more pieces put in here, like so. Now, next thing we can go ahead and get on is our intake pipe, which you can see is just a 90 degree that I shortened up a little bit. We added this plate where it will actually mount into the factory location there, and then we have the end of a 45, and this just goes straight down in here and connects into a 90. You can see it attached there and tied down into the 90 on the intake side of the turbo there. All right, so I don't know what I ordered. I ordered an air filter for this from Amazon, and this is what showed up. If you notice, the box a little small, and that's because it's this cute little thing. I don't think it's gonna have near the CFM that we actually need, so. We're gonna have to try to find something the right size. I guess the biggest issue is obviously that two inch diameter and having a good sized cold air filter there, but we'll figure something out. For the time being, I think this will do, and we can go ahead and finish routing the rest of that duct work. Beep. <laughs> That's freaking hilarious. All right, so this piece here, you will notice we actually have that little race pipe which we cut down and welded to actually this was a u that we cut we've got quite a few different u's you'll have noticed where i actually cut the whole u in half and we've been using those because it gives us nice smooth turns and obviously that guy just goes right there and keeps us nice and solid right here by the timing belt and everything instead of having a floppy joint there and I just I like the look and the idea of this a little bit better like I said than just having it sitting there floppy and our last little piece of piping here which again is another half of that U pipe and voila We'll get that snug down. We might be ready to run under boost. All right, with all of our piping hooked back up, we're back here in the car. You can see I have our little OBD2 port run to our scan tool. This is run to the K line. We have the grounds, and then I just have a jumper wire here for the time being. And as soon as I did that, we had two codes that put us in a limp mode. And both of those codes were these, And they actually have to do with the map sensor, which I don't have one. I didn't put one in here. Don't know what I was thinking. Brain farting, brain farting. So that has to happen. I went through and we pulled back out our harness for that. And so I've got it run to the location where I want it. And then in the car here, thankfully, this is why even though you're cutting up the harness, you're not completely hacking or destroying it. Here's what we have run. I have this taped up. We have two wires here, this brown and blue and purple and red. And then on this guy, we've got this yellow and black. Let me see which colors. No, yes. Yellow and black and uh, maybe. Okay, well we have a yellow and black. Where do we pull the green from? 
All right, and our last wire there, the grain green, actually comes out of the orange plug. So that is why I kept all the stuff. It's everything's custom. There's not good diagrams on any of this. There's not good videos on any of this. I may do like a full breakdown just to show everyone because you somewhat got to figure this out yourself if you haven't already done it before. And I hadn't done it before, so we're getting it figured out. That should take care of our codes. Let's go up front there and take care of the location. All right, with this little Christmas tree bit, we've drilled a nice hole here that actually fits that map sensor. Now I do have a weld in flange on the way and we'll weld it on and that'll sit there nice and flush for the time being. I'm gonna use some zip ties and I'm gonna attempt to get it on there and sealed off just so we can make sure everything functions the way it's supposed to. O-ring, washer, zip ties, boom. And it's sealed really good. So I think this will work. Beautiful, after reset, all we have is that glow plug relay that was supposed to be deleted, but it wasn't. Oh well, it won't throw us into limp mode at least. Got our boost gauge there. We can't forget to have our N75 hooked up, which I just have plumbed in. You have this hose that gets ambient pressure from the intake, which I just have a little nipple installed. You have this hose off of the vacuum pump. Don't forget your little check valve. And that also runs to that diaphragm ball thingy. Runs here, comes in the top side of the N75, and then this one runs down to the actuator on the turbo. Let's fire it up and see if we have boost. All I know is I smell fuel now. We were being in lit mode, had no fuel. Uh-oh, I think we're gonna be okay. All right, so we fired the truck up. We backed it down in front of the house here. We did a couple pulls with it. Just some very easy second gear pulls. We peaked boost right around 18 to 21 PSI, which is a little on the low side, but it seemed to do really well. We had no codes thrown or anything, so we're getting really close. And the reason that we were actually having that issue is because of that map sensor that was just zip tied on there. We were leaking boost, and also when it leaked boost right at peak, or when it leaked right at that peak boost, it was actually doing kind of a fuel cut, little funky thing there, and that was basically just because that map sensor wasn't installed correctly so once again got our friend scott there to throw that on check those dimes out and this is that little flange this was like a seven dollar map sensor flange from amazon and it came in two days and we got it thrown on there now we can just take this this is a little adapter flange it comes with two different sizes depending on which one you go with and we will be using this one just presses down in there like so and whatever I did with it okay I must have set it down somewhere let me go find it all right and we'll just be reinstalling this is actually a the factory map sensor they told me that there was no need on this setup with the tune that we have to go with a larger bar map sensor so we are just running that stock one and there we go. Doesn't that look nice? Very factory, I guess you could say, for what it is. This gets slipped back in here. And snap. There we go. Check that out that is a complete intercooler system ready to go now one thing i'm sure you will notice is obviously we did away with that goofy little tiny filter i grabbed an adapter this elbow and this big cane and filter which will give us plenty of breathing room it's a little goofy in there but 
we know we'll be able to take in as much air as we possibly can, especially as this thing, considering this thing is performance oriented and as we tune it even more. All right, we are tagged, we are insured, and it is time to take this thing on a shakedown run. All right, we have our speedometer, just so we know we're being safe. We have our boost gauge. I don't have the temp gauge hooked up yet, but this thing has given me no signs that it's going that it's running hot in any way, shape, or form. And we've got our electric fan up there working, and also I think we're going to be all right there. So we'll just take it easy. This is going to be just a shakedown run. We might throw a little bit of boost at it, but we'll see. Power on. You see our code reader pop on there just to tell us if anything happens. All right, we currently have two codes, the glow plug relay and engine temp coolant sensor from where we actually got rid of it. So I may plug that back in and just kind of zip tie it in the engine bay somewhere, hide it. Unless there's a bypass that we can do for that, but. Well, let's go. As you can see, the fan is kicked on. That tells me that that system's working well. I don't see any coolant leaks. We may still have some slight boost leaks. So far, so good.
Holy smokes. This thing is an absolute riot. <laughs> what a fun, fun, fun build. It's not crazy, crazy super fast by any means. Obviously you can see our little bed cat back there. That was something that a friend of mine had. I thought it was just the coolest little thing to put on this truck. It'll be something we can put on and take off, you know, cause it's kind of silly looking, but at the same time, it makes this thing such a farm truck sleeper. It is absolutely hilarious. I can only imagine the people's faces as this thing's whizzing around, especially when this thing lays into boost and just like, whoo, because I can, I can feel it throw me back. I can only imagine what it looks like as we're going down the road, down the highway there, but what an absolute blast. All right, got everything kind of tucked up under the dash here. There's still a little bit of smoothing out that I need to do, but for the most part, we're looking really good here. I have access to our fuses. I've got our power switch and our start button, and I installed this in a way I'll show you in just a second, where it's kind of tucked up underneath, kind of sleeper-ish. It is in a spot where they can be removed and it's not gonna affect anything in this interior. I don't wanna go hacking and doing things that we can't undo. So let's go ahead, flip this back around and stick it up in its place. All right, and there you go. Interior is back together and how nice is that? Now, I still need to figure out our two gauges there, the temperature and the boost. We may also need to put an EGR, but where should we put those? I'd like to make some kind of flip down bracket or something so we can kind of hide it because I really do want to keep this truck absolutely as simple and clean and original and sleeper as we possibly can. But she's looking very clean and very original. But let's go ahead and move on to the outside now. Something we have not done on this truck yet since I've owned it for almost three years is detail it or compound and wax it. Let's cut this thing, let's clean it up. Obviously it is going to be patinaed. We may end up painting it in the near future, but for now, let's see how sharp we can get this thing looking.
I am sweaty and nasty. It is hot, but we are done. This truck runs and it drives. It's far more powerful than it was and so smooth and such a cool, fun little truck. There's a few little things that we have to button up as far as the exhaust goes. I'll build an exhaust for it and the gauges on the inside that we need to get wrapped up. But for the most part, it runs and dries. It's street legal. It stops and we've got a tag on it, it's insured and it's ready to go. And it's time to have a little bit of fun with this thing. Obviously those few other things will tie up in the near future, but for now you'll notice that we've pulled it up on the trailer and that is because we are heading up to Pennsylvania in the morning for Mark One Madness. I cannot wait to see some of my friends and meet some of all of you and just really have a good time this weekend. Enjoy the show, enjoy the atmosphere. If you all are enjoying all this, be sure to hit the subscribe button, notification bell, if you want to, go check out our Instagram. I'll put a link to it or I'll put the thing, whatever, right here. I'll keep, I keep updates on there. We post some of our future builds. We put polls on there about things that we're doing with our future builds. So go check us out. Follow us on there to keep an eye on all of our builds that we have going on. But in the meantime, we're going to hit the road. I'm going to try to put together a really fun video on our trip up there that I'll post next week. Y'all have a good weekend. Peace out and catch y'all on the flip side. Thank <laughs> you.